Hello guys and welcome to my first YouTube video of 2024 and my first ever YouTube Q&A. If you have been around on my short history on YouTube, welcome back and thank you so much for watching and if you are new, welcome. I hope you stay. Producing more videos on YouTube is a major goal of mine for 2024 so I'm really Hoping to start off the year with a bang. One video a week would be ideal, but do not hold me to that, please. I'm just gonna try as best as I can. I do want to apologize about the quality of this video. I am filming this on my iPhone. I'm home for the holiday still. I'm heading back to New York tomorrow, but I didn't bring my really good quality YouTube camera with me because I did not expect to be filming for YouTube while I was home. And then I just kind of got a burst of inspiration. On my Instagram yesterday, I asked you guys if you had any questions that you wanted to hear me talk about in more depth. I don't really do Q and A's in long form like this. I've done a few on my Instagram stories, never anything on TikTok because I feel like people don't really do that on TikTok. I thought it would be fun and a good way for you guys to get to know me a little bit more and hear a little more in depth about my life. Just before I hop into the questions, a few little facts about me for anybody who's new here or doesn't know me. My name is Kate. I am 22 years old. I live in New York City now. I moved to New York when I was 18 to go to FIT, the Fashion Institute of Technology. I studied fashion business management. That's a huge question that I get asked all the time. I do social media full-time now, mostly TikTok and Instagram, and trying to do YouTube more. And I absolutely love sharing my life online. Now that I got those basic questions that I get a lot out of the way, let's get into the deeper questions. One question that I get all the time, best and worst parts about living in New York City. I have lived in New York for a few years now, almost five years. I've had a bit of time there. I'm halfway to the mark of being able to call myself a New Yorker. They say when you've lived in New York for 10 years, you can officially call yourself a New Yorker. I'm originally from Orlando, Florida, Winter Park to be specific, if anybody knows what that is. I adore living in Manhattan. It's one of my favorite places in the world and I've just had the best, best experience there. I would say the best part is just the energy of the city. It is literally electric. I don't know how to describe it. The different sensation when you actually live there versus going there on vacation or on a trip. Just living there and living and breathing in the energy of the city every day gives me so much inspiration. It's insane. Moving there did change my life and there's nowhere else at this current moment that I would rather be living. Who knows in the future but for at least the foreseeable future I will be in New York City. There are endless opportunities. You never know who you could meet. I've just met the most incredible and inspiring people living in New York. Every time I leave my house I just feel like I'm refueled and refired to do more with my life, to be more creative, to experience more, to do more, to work harder. It's an electric feeling I cannot describe. I don't think I would have the career I guess that I do if I was not living in New York. Clearly I went to FIT. I had a large interest in fashion and just being surrounded by that at all times it's exactly everything that I wanted out of a city. I grew up like I said in Orlando Florida and it's very limited here there's really not a fashion scene at all it's very casual fashion is just not a really big part of life here in Orlando. It's always something that I wanted to pursue since I was a child so New York was the obvious place and now being in it this might sound really dumb or superficial but for me it's something that brings me so much joy and so much creativity and really breathes life into my life is being able to express myself with fashion and having occasions to wear outfits to. I can't even describe how big of a difference that made on my life because it's such a huge passion of mine. I would say the worst part about New York City is that it is very expensive. When I moved to New York, I had no money. I really had no spending money at all. Covering my necessities, room and board and tuition and food from the dining hall, but besides that I had virtually no extra cash to spend on anything. Couldn't even really afford to pay for the subway. I would hop the subway turnstiles, which is not good. Do not do that. That's illegal. Um, you can get fined for that, so don't do that. But if you want to be there, it is possible to live there on a budget. That is actually kind of what I blew up on TikTok for is my budgeting tips. Want to scroll back on my profile really far, like two years ago, I would say 2022, 2021, I was doing a lot of budgeting content. Link some of my most popular budgeting videos in my bio if you guys want to check them out. It might not always be the easiest. It might not always be the most glamorous, but if you want to live in New York on a low budget, it is possible and I still had the absolute time of my life. I also feel like New York people either love it or hate it. When I first moved to college there, people were on both sides of the spectrum. I would say like half the population were like, I love this, this is amazing, I absolutely adore living in New York. And the other half, they just didn't really feel like it was for them, they didn't like the pace of it. It's very fast paced, it's very busy. You either feed off of that energy or you don't. So it's not for everybody, but 
it is for me. Another one of my questions I got a lot was that if I was not doing fashion, what would I be doing? And this is always a question I've kind of struggled with in a sense because my entire life I've always wanted to go into fashion. It's always been my biggest passion. I grew up watching Project Runway every single day and just being obsessed with fashion. I would say if I wasn't in this, if it was completely off the table and I couldn't do it, event planning because I love events, I love parties, I love being social, so I think that that would be really fun. Or dermatology. I feel like I would love being a dermatologist. I'm obsessed with skin and everything about it, so probably one of those two. What is your favorite opportunity being an influencer has given to you? Being an influencer, I hate that word. Oh, I feel like it's so obnoxious. Whenever somebody asks me what I do and I don't really know them, I just say I work in fashion because I feel like that's a little more approachable. <laughs> this lifestyle and this job has given me so many opportunities in this life that I had never expected or anticipated and that I'm just eternally grateful for. Or obviously financial freedom is amazing if you can make your way in it can be a very fruitful business the flexibility in the lifestyle being able to be my own boss and wake up every day make my own schedule choose what I'm going to do is incredible I think for me a really exciting part has been working with brands that I love coming to this city to go into fashion having worked for some of the brands that I work with now is mind-blowing to me. <laughs> a lot of the brands that I work with, I used to study in my classes, I used to intern for, I used to, you know, work their shows at Fashion Week and being able to be working alongside them and having my name attached to it is the most incredible feeling that I am so grateful for. It's so fun for me. I will never ever take it for granted. Experience so many incredible events like going to Fashion Week, my favorite two months of the year, February and September. But I would say one of the biggest ones, I feel as if the career options that you can go into as a young adult out of college or even as a teenager where you can directly inspire somebody, see an impact on other people's lives, hear about the impact that you've had on other people's lives, and directly communicate with them. I can't think of that many other jobs like that. Nothing makes me happier than when girls, primarily girls because that's mostly who follows me, <laughs> tell me that I've inspired them or helped them in some way and I get to literally talk with them, DM with them. People a lot of times tell me that I inspired them to go to fashion school or go into the fashion industry nothing compares to that feeling. That is the best part of being an influencer is knowing that you have made a direct impact on somebody's life in a positive way. Nothing could top that. No amount of gifts, experiences, money could top that feeling. It's indescribable. Another question I got a lot is about my health and fitness routine to stay in good shape mentally, physically, slash how do you maintain your figure. Start this off by saying genetically blessed with a very very fast metabolism. My mother is tiny. I have the exact same body type as my mother. Tall and skinny. That's what God gave me. <laughs> However, I do... I don't want to say I live a very healthy lifestyle because I don't think I can really back that up. I really don't that much. But I'm extremely active. I walk typically at minimum 10,000 steps a day, usually more around 20,000 steps a day, honestly just by living in New York and I prefer to walk everywhere. I hate cardio, you will never catch me running, I don't think I could run a mile, and I just choose not to do cardio because I don't want to spend my time doing something that I don't like. But I do do Pilates, I do yoga a lot, kind of just whenever I have the time. I'm not too much of a stickler about it, but I like to be very active and I like to eat healthy, but I also absolutely adore food. I love dessert, I eat chocolate, every day like i actually eat chocolate after every single meal i keep dark chocolate in my freezer and after every meal i eat i have to have a piece of dark chocolate it's a non-negotiable i've tried to change it but it's not gonna happen unfortunately <laughs> that's here to stay i eat out all the time i drink i like to live my life because i'm young um and that's just kind of where at the point that i've gotten to is that i know that i have a fast metabolism and that i can do what i please and i'm going to enjoy it while it is still in this shape and not worry about it too much. That being said, I have gotten another question. Have you ever struggled with body image, your relationship with food? If so, what changed? Duh. Unfortunately, I don't think I know a single woman, men too, but I don't know a single woman who does not have body image issues or has had issues with food. It's so unfortunate, but every single girl I know has had some kind of issue with food or with body image that is our reality today. So sad. I, I just have to be real. <laughs> I've definitely had a history. High school was rough. 
high school was rough. That can be a story for another time. I'm at a very, very healthy place with my relationship with food and my relationship with my body. Some days are better than others. Trust me, I've had a history. What it came down to for me, I guess what changed. Moving to New York helped so much. Being more social helped so much. I have so much more fun when I'm enjoying myself and eating what I please and not worrying too much about my body. I'm happier, I'm healthier, and the extra 10 pounds is probably worth it. What is the most difficult part about being an influencer slash being online doing social media? Honestly, kind of going along with the last question, I don't think that it is normal nor healthy to be so aware of what you look like every single day and to take pictures of yourself, videos of yourself, look in the mirror as often as you have to do being in this industry and job being literally you and recording yourself and taking photos of yourself. It is not normal to know what you look like as intensely as an influencer does. It's not normal to have an opinion, whether positive or negative, about every single inch of your body. It can be very taxing to your mental health. I think that's something that I, I just don't really hear talked about enough from other influencers, but yeah, it's true. I would say that is probably the hardest part. What is some advice on changing up my wardrobe? If you have been around, you know that I have had a million, a million style eras. I've changed my style so, so, so many times. I've done a few videos about every style that I've had, but I've really, really tried everything and I kind of feel like I finally hit my groove of what I really like to wear but it took some time my best advice would be try everything don't be opposed to trying anything until you really find your style that you feel comfortable in then once you really feel like you've found your groove and what makes you feel most confident most comfortable you love to walk down the street wearing it find that and stick to that play around first until you really really feel comfortable and then build your wardrobe around what makes you feel best what is the best thing you did to get your influencer career up and running and how do you block out other people's opinions? I guess the second part of that question is the key answer to the first part of the question. The hardest part of going into social media is blocking out other people's opinions. Maybe not so much anymore because now I feel like it's more normal to be online and doing social media. At least when I started eight years ago, it was really, really weird and like people thought it was really odd. Like people did not think that I was cool. <laughs> But the biggest part is that you just have to drop out everybody else's opinion because that is the number one thing that I feel like holds most people back and held me back the most. Once you get over that hump, it's just consistency, trying new things, engaging with people. Number one key is consistency though. Like I said, I've been doing this for eight years. I started out with a blog, then I did Instagram, then I started TikTok, and now here we are today. Favorite brand you've worked with? Oh my god, this is such a hard one because I've worked with so many of my dream brands at this point. Uh, I would say probably Tiffany & Co, Ralph Lauren, Louis Vuitton, Dior, Carolina Herrera I love. Yeah, I would say those are my favorite. Next question, can you talk about your hair journey? I'm really trying to get my hair healthier. <sighs> If you have been around, you guys know. My hair has been through the ringer and it's finally really starting to look so much better than it used to. Still, I guess thin. I've never had super thick hair. The shine and texture and everything about my hair has really, really improved. I just need to make an entirely separate video about that because it's going to take an hour to explain everything that I've done. If you were curious, this is what my hair looked like about two years ago. I made progress. Okay, some rapid fire questions. Do you prefer Instagram or YouTube? Instagram, definitely. I don't watch YouTube at all. <laughs> Why am I even doing this? <laughs> if my video is not great, you know that I don't know really what else is going on out there. <laughs> Opinions on fake tan, I used to all the time and then my best friend told me like, Kate, this literally looks so bad on you. You would look better pale. And I've been pale ever since. What was your high school experience like? Mm, not great. I was definitely very nerdy in high school. Did the international baccalaureate program, so I was really into school. It was okay. I had friends. I wasn't prom queen or anything, that's for sure. Gold or silver jewelry? I would say primarily gold, but I do have a silver watch that I wear sometimes that I really like. It depends on the day, but primarily gold. Signature scent, uh, right now, Perfume de Marly Delina, which I love. I just realized that my cat has been up here. Oh, hello, baby. Hi. Oh, she's so sweet. I think that's all the questions I'm going to answer today because I do not want this video to be too long, but if you guys want a part two, please let me know and feel free to DM me questions for it and let me know in the comments 
what video you want to see next on my youtube channel love you guys so much make sure to subscribe and follow me on tiktok and on my instagram and happy new year